Sean, I desperately want to understand what reality is, and my physicist friends tell me that the way to start is to assume that time is not real. That seems to me bizarre. Yeah, you're right to think that, and I'm not sure you're talking to the right physicist. <laughs> okay, well, now I am. <laughs> but it's a very natural thing uh, to on both sides. Time is obviously real in the sense that we use it all the time. You yeah. can't even make a sentence right, without invoking right. <laughs> some notion of time, right? Past, present, future. In fact, uh, dictionary researchers have shown that the word time is the most used noun in the English oh. language. Hmm. Uh, so certainly something about time is real. What physicists who say time might not be real really mean is that it might not be fundamental. Uh, mm -hmm. That is to say that when we dig down into the laws of physics, we realize that time is not one of the crucial objects, crucial concepts that we require to make sense of reality. Now, even that is actually completely unclear at this moment. The best theories we have of reality right now do include the notion of time in them. It is not an illusion. It is not emergent. It is not a fake. Mm. It is really there. It is one of the fundamental things that we need. So the question is, once we finally understand everything, will we have a better theory of everything in which time disappears? And opinions differ. My personal belief is that time is actually going to survive, that once we understand the best possible theory of nature, time will be a big part of it. Okay, well, if we look at time, there may be three components. The sense of a now, which, which makes uh, the past really past, and the future really hasn't happened yet, and now, whatever that means, is the only reality. Uh, second is maybe a flow of time that we sense there's movement, and third is a direction, that it's going forward as far as our perceptions are concerned. Um, and so in each of the three of those, how does the concept of whether time is fundamental or not survive? One of the things that is really confusing about time is that we use the same word to mean mm -hmm. different things. Okay. And in fact, this was one of Einstein's great breakthroughs when he realized in special relativity that time as used to denote moments in the history of the universe is completely different from time as used to measure duration for my personal self. Mm -hmm. So the time that I measure as I travel with my watch throughout the universe is not the same as the time we used to say the Big Bang happened 13.7 billion years ago. They're related to each other in an obvious way. And in fact, he figured out exactly how they are related to each other. If Isaac Newton had been correct, then they simply would have been the same. same thing, right. Einstein showed that there are two different things, the time you experience, the time we use to slice the universe into moments. And then you have this difference between past and future, and that's a bigger puzzle that we're still working on. Uh, we think we understand the basics of it. We think that it all comes down to not the fundamental laws of physics, but the particular configuration the universe is in right now. Uh, if you were Aristotle, if you were pre-Isaac Newton, you wouldn't have thought that there was a question to be answered. You would have no. thought there was the past, there was the future. These are different, obviously. But Isaac Newton comes along, we develop our sense of the laws of physics, and the difference between the past and future disappears. This is a puzzle. Now, now there is a puzzle where there wasn't one before. How do you get the manifest fact that the past is different from the future out of the deep down laws of physics? And we have lots of ideas along those lines, but we're just not sure what the complete picture looks like. Mm. All right, well, look, we have these two massive ways of understanding the world that came up in the, in the early part of the 20th century, relativity and quantum mechanics. And in relativity, time seems to be this static, four-dimensional, so-called block universe where every coordinate in space and time is fixed. And in quantum mechanics, where time seems to really be flowing and real and is, is, is set. And you've got to integrate the two a lot of different ways, but time can't be both at the same time, or can they? Well, I think it can be both at the same time. I think time can be both existent equally well in the past, present, future, and have the appearance to us of becoming. Is that like a married bachelor? It is not quite like that. It's more like athletic scholarship. It's something that seems contradictory at first, but once you understand it, it begins to make sense. So this is the job. Not at Caltech. That's right. Uh, this is the job of physics and philosophy, to take things that are in tension, mm -hmm. not directly contradicting each other, but things that seem to be pointing in different directions and to reconcile them. So quantum mechanics has its own 
problems of interpretation. Uh, and I think that even before we get to quantum mechanics, there is a problem of the arrow of time versus the block universe. Mm -hmm. The block universe idea, um, is Einstein uh, advocated it very strongly, but it certainly goes back to Newton and Laplace. The idea that if you knew everything there was to know about the universe right now, you could make a perfect prediction about what would happen in the future and a perfect retrodiction of what had happened in the past. What happens at every moment in the universe, according to this idea, is implicit in every other moment of the mm -hmm. universe. And it's a wonderfully beautiful idea and incredibly powerful. It gives rise to the clockwork universe metaphor. Uh, but we have to reconcile that with, for instance, the idea that I can make a choice about what to have for <laughs> dinner tomorrow. We have to reconcile that with the feeling that we are flowing through time, with the manifest fact that we can remember yesterday but we cannot remember tomorrow. The wonderful thing about recent investigations is that they point toward a single unified explanation for all of these differences between the past mm. and the future. Mm. And that unified explanation is based on the famous celebrated second law of thermodynamics. The fact that entropy increases Disorder. as the universe ages. Entropy is a measure of the disorganization, the disorderliness of the universe. In the past, things were more orderly. In the future, they're becoming more disorderly. By itself, that's not a surprise, right? I mean, no one leaves their house a mess, mm -hmm. locks the doors, and expects to come back the next day at all cleaned up, right? Mm -hmm. Houses don't clean themselves up. They do tend to dirty themselves up well, almost automatically. This is a well-known feature of how the world works. The surprising thing is that that basic feature of the world, the tendency for things to become messy, is really responsible for all of the differences between the past mm -hmm. and the future. Even mm -hmm. the fact that I can decide right now to have French food tonight rather than Italian food, but I can't decide to have had <laughs> French food last night. Well, so what does that mean in summary to the concept of time? What it means is that the apparent intrinsic difference between past and future is only apparent. We believe we treat the past differently from the future, but the laws of physics don't. And the answer is not that we don't understand the laws of physics, it's that we live in a particular universe. We don't live in any old universe. We live in one that started very, very orderly. If the universe had started in a state of maximal disorder, sort of the most likely configuration <laughs> to start in, then there would truly be no distinction between past and future. But what that means is there could be no free will, there could be no choice, there could be no memory, there could be no metabolism, no <laughs> aging, no evolution, no, there could be no living beings, there could be no conscious thought. So we live in a very particular configuration of stuff that features a strong arrow of time, and we're putting together a picture where it all stems from a common cause.